the floor jack, and the jack stands. These are the six ton jack stand set. Now something to uh, pay attention to is it's six tons for both of them. The floor jack is not made to hold anything. It's made to lift and then you put the jack stand under it and set it on the jack stand. This is, this is the Daytona jack from Harbor Freight. And I have used the Pittsburgh jacks and Duralast jacks and all the different sorts I use Snap-on and my opinion, this is the best one that I found. I've lifted probably heavier with it than I should. It's never made me w wonder, okay, is this jack gonna fail right now? With the Pittsburgh jacks, especially the small aluminum jacks, I'm always wondering, okay, is how many more lifts do I have before this thing fails? And is it gonna fail catastrophically? Is it gonna fail in a way where I get hurt? With this, I don't really worry about that. Gloves. So the gloves that I like are Raven ones. For a while, I didn't wear any gloves and I would just wash my hands, but you never really get it all. I guess you get cancer from this stuff too. Safety is a lifestyle. A pair of boots is, is recommended. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I'm wearing. These are Red Wing boots. Hearing protection also. You only get one pair of ears. Sunglasses, something that wraps around preferably. It's important to me to not have my eyes get a drop of oil right in my eyeball or to have a little shaving of metal slice into my retina. So that's enough about safety. Let's talk about impact wrenches. Impact wrenches are a thing that I've really gone the full, I've gone the full gamut. I've had the, the, the Bauer in, impact wrench from Harbor Freight. I didn't know that that wasn't gonna be good enough to get a lot of wheels off. I lost that. I don't know where I lost that. So I went and I bought used an, imp, an earthquake impact wrench. And the earthquake was good, did all right. There's a lot of stuff it couldn't do though. That got stolen. Let me tell you what, the Milwaukee is superior. Superior in, in every way to the earthquake. They're supposed to be in the same class, but they're not in the same class. This is a professional's tool. So this is a gear wrench, half inch metric master set. Starts at nine and doesn't skip any sizes up until goes from 24 to 26, 27, and then jumps to 30. Deep and shallow. I've never broken any of the half inch gear wrench sockets. I really like the case. I really like the case. I don't like these metal buckles though. These things will break eventually. Here I have a set of four ratchets. I have a half inch flex head, this ratchet, quarter inch ratchet, this one. This is the gear wrench three eighths socket set. Wrenches. Wrenches are a funny thing because you can have the basic set of wrenches from Husky and they do all right, but ratcheting wrenches. And then if you get ratcheting wrenches that have a flex head on them, you just hit the next level of versatility. My recommendation is the, the Gear Wrench 120 XP flex head ratcheting wrenches. I've had a couple defective ones, a couple that have broken on me. Gear Wrench has replaced them all. I really like Gear Wrench's customer service. The tools are not made in America. But when you call them, an American woman and answered me, dude, I had these broken parts, these broken sockets and, and wrenches for the longest time in a broken ratchet. I think the broken ratchet is what pushed me over the edge. I didn't even want to call them because I just didn't want to sit on the phone. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to sit on the phone with them and go through a bunch of garbage. But I was so relieved when I called them and they didn't give me any hassle at all. The 120 XP ratchets, they only go up to 19. These are the jumbo wrenches from Gear Wrench. I think they're 84 tooth, but when you're working with stuff this big, you don't really need the 120 XP. 21, 22, 24, and 25. When I use them, it's usually on suspension parts. Flex head ratcheting wrenches are always clutch. You'll never regret buying a good set of flex head ratcheting wrenches. 
an adjustable wrench. When you need this, it's just so convenient because you can just do it. Now, this is one from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a Doyle, long extensions, stubby extension, regular impact, a wobble, screwdrivers. I've got the, the Doyle screwdrivers from Harbor Freight. The handles are kind of starting to wear out a little bit on them. That is from getting fluids on them. These long flatheads, they're really strong. I've never had any trouble with these other than the handle issue that I just referred to. Here's a shorter one. I don't use these as much as these. These I use as pry bars a lot. This one especially is handy for loosening hose clamps. I've got a set of Quinn pliers, needle nose, the alligator random chrome 16. I have a random chrome 9 16 These are for spark plugs. So I'll use those to get the spark plugs loose and then I'll use a magnet to get the spark plug out. I have these stubby Doyle screwdrivers and you see that they're in this packaging and they're all beat up and tore up. It's because I never use them. If I could go back, I, I would just not buy these. WD-40. WD-40 is really great for getting electrical connectors to come loose. You just spray a little juice in there and then suddenly things just aren't on so tight anymore. It's like magic. Brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is really great. It cleans just about everything. Don't get it in your eyes, don't get it in your mouth, okay? Keep your mouth closed when you're working with brake cleaner. If you get this in your body, it can make you really sick. Fast orange. Let's just take a quick break. Don't get too wrapped up in the specific brands or buying all the best whatever. Especially when we're talking about Snap-on, Matco, Cornwell. I don't think it's very wise to buy a lot of the stuff that they have. The gear wrench is so good, why would I buy a Snap-on? But the sockets, a lot of different ways you can carry sockets. Just about any brand is gonna work. Do we really need to buy all Snap-on screwdrivers? An impact wrench, that's gotta be a priority, getting a, a half inch impact wrench. Taking wheels off of a car can be really easy all the time, or it can be not that easy. Buy the right stuff the first time if you can, but if you can't, buy what you can afford. You just gotta get out there and get making money. A multimeter, 30 ton bottle jack. This is gonna be important for whenever you're trying to lift heavy equipment, big trailers, big diesel trucks. You can lift semi trucks with this. Here I've got a set of, it's a master set of hex head sockets. Here we have star bits and tamper proof star bits and triple squares and external star bits or Torx bits, sorry. We, you got all the stuff with this kit. This is also from Capri. These cases, other than that one coming open randomly, these cases are pretty good. Jumper cables, bearing grease, hammers, 32 ounce dead low ball peen. This is Daniel's hammer. He left it in my car, so it's mine now. These are, these are test strips. These are to test coolant and to test brake fluid. These are money makers. Coolant draining fills and flushes and brake flushes. If you're prepared for that, this gets you those jobs because you can show the customer the test strip and say, hey, look, your brakes are ready to lock up, seize up, that's what happens. In fact, my fleet customer, that's what happened the day before they called me on one of their heavy duty trucks, it was a three quarter ton Chevy. It made all the calipers seize up and it could have been avoided by a brake flush. Scraper, a Pittsburgh pry bar, a big pry bar, shop towels, scan tool, headset. You see we've got blow mold cases over here. So half inch, three eighths, Torx, external Torx, star bits, hex bits, three eighths swivel sockets all my pliers and screwdrivers and ratchets and ratcheting wrenches. This stuff, I'll just stack in the corner of the trunk of a compact car. My scan tool, I will keep with me everywhere. This is worth more than everything else. I don't carry the bottle jack with me everywhere. It's heavy, but it's not very big. Jumper cables, I just kind of plop them in there. The pry bar and the long extension, you can't really fit anywhere, so I just kind of throw them in there. This basket has all the stuff that won't fit into an ammo can. So we've got our towels, impact wrench, gloves, see my pliers, 
There's my multimeter, pry bar, half inch ratchet, screwdrivers I never use, hammer, hammer. I have this basket and then I have this ammo can. Whenever it's time to use pliers, screwdrivers, ratchets, anything that's in this ammo can, I'll come up, set it next to my work area, dump it upside down, and find what I need. If you don't like that, I don't care.